Welcome to episode 92. This is a very quick episode here in the La Repo, an update on the Brian Hagrid story, the Pennsylvania man from the United States who was arrested in the Tox and Caicos Islands as he was found to have in his possession about 20 rounds of ammunition at the airport in the Tox and Caicos Islands and Providenciales. He was arrested and the American media went wild. They would have you to believe that at his sentencing, it would have been doomsday, sensationalizing a very simple and straightforward issue where the laws of the Turks and Caicos Islands, draconian as it may be, when it comes to firearms and ammunition, and the sentencing, a mandatory minimum sentence of 12 years, which I think is absurd. But the law sets out clearly that the judge was empowered under Section 30 of the Firearm Ordinance in any sentencing for firearm-related offenses. If the circumstances merits, whether in relation to the defendant or the offense, to find exceptional circumstances. And if there's a finding of exceptional circumstances, then this obviously will have an impact on what the final sentence would be. So I was always confident that in the final analysis, applying the law, the sentencing judge was going to find the right balance, the appropriate sentence for the crime. Because whether or not the defendant brought the ammunition inadvertently into the Turks and Caicos Islands, without any malice or without any criminal intent was besides the point. The fact that he was found in the Turks and Caicos Islands with ammunition fulfill, in my view, the elements of the offense under the ordinance. The elements of possession were met, knowledge, custody, and control. And so someone in that circumstances, in my view, their best bet or their best chances is to plead guilty, show themselves at the mercy of the court and argue exceptional circumstances. And that is what the defendant did in these circumstances. And this attempt at bullying from American citizens, the American media, and the American political class was shameful and disgraceful at best. And at worst, it shows that America itself, the political class, have no respect for the laws of other countries because they believe that when their citizens are arrested in other countries, that the arrest is invalid and their citizens should not be subject to the laws of other countries. When an American travels outside of America, he does not carry, he or she does not carry or is not covered by the American Constitution or the laws in the state in which they live in America. They are governed by the laws in the country in which they visit. And so they must adhere to those laws. That is not to say 
that I don't have an issue with the gun laws in the Turks and Caicos Islands because I believe it was ill-taught. There was no proper consultation. All possible scenarios were not covered. The law, in my view, is draconian. It's an absurd and wicked piece of legislation. And those who condemn its harshness were right to do so, whether locally or internationally. And I had a lot of sympathy in the beginning with the several defendants, American citizens, who were charged for having been found at the airport with ammunition. But when the bullying started from American citizens and American elected official, some of my sympathy began to wane. But I always knew that the law was robust enough to navigate these challenging circumstances. And with a sentence handed down of a suspended sentence and a fine of $6,700, I think that justice was done in this case. So to be clear, the defendant was sentenced to one year in prison, suspended. Notwithstanding the recent decision from the Court of Appeal that made it clear that even if a judge in sentencing finds that there's exceptional circumstances, that the sentence must be a custodial sentence, case laws for eons have directed, have concluded that a suspended sentence is a custodial sentence. So the defendant in effect was sentenced to one year imprisonment, albeit it was suspended. I believe that satisfies the decision of the Court of Appeal. And he was fined $6,700. The ordinance is clear. It could be a fine, it could be imprisonment, or it could be both. So it meets the requirement of the ordinance. Justice was solved. I don't believe that any of these American tourists and ammunition charges in the Turks and Caicos are going to see a day in prison unless they are on remand. And most likely, by the time the matter comes around to sentencing, it may be time solved. And they're going to go home back to their families. But this raised two very important questions. They are like the elephant in the room that no one is um, addressing. How did Americans, or anyone for that matter, were able to come through the TSA check-in without this ammunition being discovered. That is, I think, a very important question that needs to be addressed. And while the Americans are scrutinizing people's laws and trying to bully us and talking about travel ban and all this sort of stuff, they should look at the inefficiencies of their own system that they couldn't even um, discover or detect someone coming through their own checkpoints with ammunition. And the second issue is that we should say kudos 
to our security apparatus here at the airport who discovered what the Americans or what the American system failed to discover. And so, justice, I think, was solved in this matter because the circumstances are truly exceptional. But there's another bigger issue. Everyone who is traveling has a responsibility to check and to double check their bags before they reach to the airport. And if you know that in your country you are using a certain bag to go to the range because you are a gun owner or a licensed firearm owner in, the, in America, then it places a burden on you to check your bags thoroughly to ensure that there's no nothing left over because you're going to another country. It's, um, it's common sense. But I do accept that there are occasions when Things like this can happen. I had an experience personally many years ago. I was coming from a Caribbean country in which I am the holder, or which I was the holder, I should say, of a license firearm. And when I got to the airport, before my departure, I handed over my firearm and ammunition to a friend and said, turn this into the police for me as usual. And when I come next year, I would just retrieve it and pay the, the license fees, etc. And when I get into another country, because I had um, a connecting flight and I had some time to spare, and I met an old um, classmate that I have not seen for many years in the airport. He had moved to that country and was residing there for many years. And while we were um, having a conversation, I opened my briefcase, was to show him something. And to my dismay, I had six rounds of ammunition in my briefcase. I came to the security in the country that I departed and it wasn't flagged. But I'm sure, or I believe, that my luck would have run out. when I was going to check in, in this second country to continue my, my journey to the United States. So I agree and I accept that these um, um, sort of things can happen. This oversight can, can take place, but it is incumbent and every traveler to check their luggage thoroughly to ensure that they are not taking any prohibited items into the country of their destination. So, I believe that the other four or five Americans awaiting sentence in the Tox and Caicos Islands should have hope that the justice system in the Tox and Caicos Islands works. Not everyone feels that it works for them. But in this case, I think that the sentence was just and proportionate. And I believe that the sentence for the others will also be just and proportionate. 
here's where I'm going to leave this episode for today. I don't want to run it too long. If you like anything that I have just said, please give it a thumbs up. Please like, please share. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. And I'll see you shortly in my next episode. Cheers. Mm -hmm.